Our moon is getting rusty and experts say it's all Earth's fault. A new study detected the presence of rust on both poles of the moon's surface, a phenomenon that should be unlikely given the moon's lack of atmosphere. Let's find out in today's video what is causing the rust on moon. But before we begin today's video, if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Subscribing is free and if you do not like the content, you can always unsubscribe later. But the channel needs your support and help to grow. This composite image of the moon from the moon mineralogy mapper shows water ice on the poles. The researchers found hints of hematite or rusting when studying the spectra in those regions. Let's find out what is rusting. So rust is an iron oxide, a usually reddish brown oxide found by the reaction of iron and oxygen in the presence of water or air moisture. Several forms of rust are distinguishable both visually and by spectrology and form under different circumstances. The moon is losing all its white glow and becoming increasingly red, all because it's getting rusty, that is what scientists are saying. What's more surprising is that the Earth's atmosphere might be what's causing it. The red planet Mars, for example, gets its nickname from the reddish hue that blankets the planet, which results from the iron on its surface combining with oxygen and water. But if this chemical reaction involves oxygen and water, how does rust form in a dry, atmosphere-less environment like the moon? And that is exactly what a team of scientists have tried to figure out after they detected rust on the north and south poles of the moon. Scientists had been really puzzled by this. The rusting of the moon's poles was first discovered in 2008. According to Shuai Li, who is the study's lead author and an assistant researcher at the University of Hawaii, he had been studying the observation data sent by the JPL Moon Mineralogy Mapper. The instrument surveyed on the moon about the Chandrayaan-1 orbiter of the Indian Space Research Organization. When Lee examined the data, he noticed that the spectra or the wavelengths of the light reflecting on the moon's surface on its poles registered differently than the rest of its surface. When Lee zeroed in on the poles, he found that there were iron-rich rocks producing spectra signatures that matched those produced by a hematite, a specific type of iron oxide mineral commonly found on the Earth's surface. It was a shocking discovery since the naturally dry conditions of the moon shouldn't allow such compounds to form. In the study published in the journal Science Advances, the team revealed that the Earth's atmosphere extends far enough that it has impacted the environments on the moon's surface. Since the moon is devoid of its own atmosphere and therefore is without a source of oxygen, it appears to be getting a supply of oxygen from Earth. This terrestrial oxygen is able to reach the moon through the extension of Earth's magnetic field called a magnetotail. However, even with the water found on the moon, there shouldn't be enough to trigger rusting. But researchers hypothesize that fast-moving dust particles that hit the moon might free water molecules locked onto the moon's surface layer or even carry water molecules themselves. Another very important condition for rust to form on space objects so close to the sun is that they need to have a layer of protective atmosphere to shield them from the sun's solar winds. These solar winds produce streams of charged particles that hit anything in its path with hydrogen which acts as a reducer. The presence of this hydrogen hinders the oxidation process needed for rusting to take place. But the moon has adopted its own protective shield borrowed from the Earth's magnetic field that flows to its surface through the magnetotail. According to a study, the magnetotail blocks up to 99% of the sun's solar winds from hitting the moon during every full moon. It's a temporary blanket over the moon's surface during which rust formation occurs. Scientists have said that this discovery will reshape our knowledge about the moon's polar regions. Earth may have played an important role on the evolution of the moon's surface. For iron to turn rusty red, it needs what is called an oxidizer, a molecule such as oxygen that removes electrons from materials such as iron. But the sun's solar wind, a stream of charged particles that constantly hit the moon with hydrogen, has the opposite effect. Now, as I have already said, hydrogen is a reducer or a molecule that donates electrons to other molecules. Without protection from solar winds, such as the magnetic field that shields our own planet from it, 
the rust should not be able to form on the moon. But it does, and the key might be our own planet. The moon doesn't have an atmosphere of its own to provide sufficient amount of oxygen. But it has trace amounts donated by the Earth's atmosphere. The terrestrial oxygen travels to the moon along an elongated extension of the planet's magnetic field, which I have mentioned is named as magnetotail. Earth's magnetotail can reach all the way to the near side of the moon, where more of the hematite was found. What's more, at every full moon, the magnetotail blocks 99% of the solar winds from blasting the moon, drawing a temporary curtain over the lunar surface. The moon is mostly devoid of water, save for frozen water found in the lunar craters on the moon's far side, far from where most of the hematite was found. But the researchers propose that the fast-moving dust particles that bombard the moon might free water molecules locked onto the moon's surface layer, allowing the water to mix with the iron. These dust particles might even be carrying water molecules themselves and their impact might create that heat which is increasing the oxidization rate. Okay, so if this continues, what is going to happen is the moon is generally going to lose its white glow and it's more going to give out a reddish glow. So co-author Abigail Freeman, a planetary geoscientist at JPL said in a statement, at first I totally didn't believe it. It shouldn't exist based on the conditions present in the moon. But since we discovered water on the moon, people have been speculating that there could be a great variety of minerals than we realize if that water had reacted with the rocks. However, all these are still hypotheses and more data is needed to understand exactly why the moon is rusting. NASA plans to send some future missions to the moon along with manned mission by 2024 to study more of the moon's surface and this phenomenon of rusting of the moon. Even more surprising, small amounts of hematite have been found on the far side of the moon, which should be too far for the Earth's oxygen to hitch a ride on the planet's magnetotail. So it remains a mystery how moon is rusting. However, if you are worried about moon going to start giving red light, there's nothing to be worried about at the moment because it would take multiple lifetimes for this rusting to cover up majority of the surface of the moon and start giving a red glow. So you can still enjoy the white glow of the moon for years to come. All this information was published on the journal Science Advances on September 2. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button to show your support because the channel needs your support to grow.